Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's me, Aaron, Professor Thorgy, your guide to all things geeky, and finally, after all this time, this is it. This is the end of our Batman vs. Superman discussion. We've been talking about this thing for so long, which is appropriate since it had a three year long build up. Uh, but yeah, you by now all know my feelings on it in case you have not seen my review or our spoiler discussion. Click on my face for the review, click on her face for our spoiler discussion. Uh, by the way, this is Michelle for anybody who doesn't Hi. know. The one I'm who... here for emotional support. <laughs> kind of, basically. You're here because what I did is I decided, you know what, we need a video that just ends this discussion. That just mm -hmm. doesn't like firmly say, oh, the movie is this or the movie is that. We just need something that goes, guys, we have now talked about it. Let's have one more video where we just get out there all the questions that we have left. Just get it all out of your system. Exactly, because that was the thing is that like after I made our review and then the spoiler discussion, I still was like, there's other things I wanted to talk about. There's other like there's other problems like I just thought of right now that I want to discuss. Uh, so I was like, you know, this is it. This is it. You guys send me any comments, any questions that you have about this movie, about how I felt about the movie, about the movie itself, and I am going to now make a video in which I just read through everything that you sent me and we talk about. Uh, you guys really stepped it up. You guys sent me a ton of stuff. There is way too much for me to go over in this one video. Uh, I'm going to try and get to as many as I can, but yes, this is it. This is the very first ever Professor Thorgy Q&A session. Um, you guys sent the questions to me, but I figured Michelle sat through this along with me, <laughs> so she might have a different take on this. And also because I've learned from those Daredevil post-Geek Out reaction videos I did, I can talk about the things that I've seen, but I'm way more charismatic and way more energetic when there's another human being in the living room with me when I'm talking about this stuff. So for your own entertainment, uh, I'm way more on point when there's someone else here. Uh, but okay, so I told you that you guys could leave for me your feelings about the movie, your questions about the movie, your theories about the movie in the comments of that video I made. Uh, you could send them to me on Twitter or you could send them to me on Tumblr. So I'm just gonna go over each of those. I'm gonna start on Tumblr because that's where I got the least number of things so we can just clear that out right now. Uh, first one, this one came from Anonymous. Okay. We actually have a lot from Anonymous. Hell yeah. <laughs> I always wonder on Tumblr if my Anonymous things all come from just one person. Uh, I've always had that thought. I know they don't, but okay. This one. I have two questions for your Batman vs Superman Q&A. One, I have actually not seen the movie. While I had no intention to see it, my girlfriend really wants to see it. Should I give it a try or should I try and convince her otherwise? Question number one, simple answer, go see the movie. Go see the movie. Your girlfriend wants to see a movie. Go and see it. Don't get me wrong, you don't have to see everything that your girlfriend wants to see. Uh, in fact, sometimes there are going to be red flags. Mm -hmm. Like if she says, I want to see Fifty Shades of Grey, <laughs> that is a red flag. If she says, I want to see the new Atlas Shrugged movie, that's a red flag. This is a giant blockbuster film that everyone's talking about. She wants to see the giant blockbuster film that everyone's talking about. Go with your girlfriend to see the giant blockbuster film that everyone's talking about. It's like, it's, I, I did not like this movie. I really had negative feelings towards this movie. However, I stand by the statement that I made that it's not terrible. And I know it's not terrible because when other people in my store said that they liked it, you can tell how bad a movie is, or at least how negatively you feel about it, by how you respond to other people when they like it. And in my store, for some reason, someone was going around asking everybody to rate it on a scale of 0 to 10. And I gave it, I think I gave it a 3. There were like three other people that gave it scores less than me. Everybody else was higher than me. Uh, the highest score anyone gave it was a 7. And when that person said they gave it a 7, that was as high as they were going to go, I was like, I can see that. Alright, listen, I really did not like this film. I was really negative on it. But if you tell me that you're giving it a 7 out of 10, okay, I can see that. I can see how there's enough stuff in here that you could have liked it up to a 7 out of 10. Uh, but it's like, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey? Someone told me they gave that a 7 out of 10, I'd be like, shut the fuck up. Shut up. Shut your dumb face up. That movie is at max a 2. Alright? Uh, yeah, this movie, 
I don't think it's good. But there's enough in there that you can make it through it. Uh, there's enough in there that if your girlfriend after this says, Oh, I like that. I thought it was pretty good. And you didn't like it. It's not going to be like a blood feud. You'll be able to get through it. Uh, that's what I was trying to say with that 7 out of 10 thing. And the other thing is, this movie is not destructive to, like, culture. No. This movie is not, it's not like, again, like Fifty Shades of Grey, where it was just like, this thing is like being harmful to the outside world and anyone who watches it. No, it's just not a well-made film. Uh, so, yeah, you can sit through a pretty poor film for two and a half hours if your girlfriend wants to see it. That's just part of being in a relationship. Uh, for example, I'm the one who wanted to go and see this, and she came with me. So, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I you did not want to go and see it. Which, ironically, you came out way, way more positive than I did. I so. think it's because I was going in with such a negative attitude, and I was like, oh, it wasn't as bad as I was expecting. Yeah. Uh, uh, so there's no, no, uh, yeah. the question from a novice. Yeah. That's, just, that's just some relationship advice from <laughs> old Professor Thorgy. It's like, your girlfriend wants to see the big summer blockbuster, go see the big summer blockbuster. That's all there is to it. Uh, the other question from this person was, after seeing this movie, what DC movies are you looking forward to the most slash the least? The least is easy, Justice League, because it's being made by the exact same people. Uh, yeah, the Justice League film, I am not looking forward to that in any way, shape, or form. And it hurts me as a comic book fan to say that. Uh, the one I'm most looking forward to, uh, probably the Ben Affleck Batman film that they're going to make. <laughs> Because everybody, even the people who hated this film, was like, Ben Affleck is actually pretty good in that role. Uh, and I really liked Alfred in here. And knowing that Ben Affleck, they haven't said this, but I would be shocked if like Ben Affleck did not come in and write and direct this. And that to me is the stuff that he does that really blows me away. Like Argo is one of the most amazing films I've seen in the last decade. I love that film so much. So same with The Town. So I'm like, okay, that dude wants to come in and direct and write a Batman film. And he did a pretty good job starring it. All right, I'm fine. I'm down with that. I'm looking forward to a Wonder Woman after the way she was portrayed in Batman vs. Superman. I would totally be fine with the Wonder Woman <laughs> film, too. I'm actually looking forward to that one as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm kind of looking forward to Aquaman, too, simply because the guy directing it, literally, before the weekend was up, before the first weekend was up for Batman vs. Superman, the director of the film came out and said, my movie's going to be fun. Aquaman will be fun, guys. He, like, he saw the problems with this film as well, and he was like, no, people want to enjoy themselves in a the theater when they're watching a superhero. <laughs> so yeah, he came out and said, I was like, okay, I'm gonna give you a shot. Uh, Suicide Squad. Meanwhile, Suicide Squad. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to that. God damn. I was talking in, uh, at work with someone about this, and it was like, how weird is it that after this film, and after the critical bomb that's been, and also... I don't know what it's going to do this weekend, but I just saw that on Friday it had an 80% drop from last Friday, uh, which is huge. Like, I went into, like, it made $15 million on Friday, which is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, but for a film that made the money it did last weekend to only make $15 million on Friday, that is really bad. Um, so, I was talking to someone at work about this, but how weird is it that now after this failure, failure, I'm gonna put that in quotation marks, but after this disappointment. I think that's a better word too. Yeah, after this disappointment, the fate of the DC Cinematic Universe depends on a group of supervillains being hired by these corporate guys going in there to an achieve an impossible mission. In other words, the Suicide Squad movie has to do the exact thing that the Suicide Squad was built on doing. <laughs> It's sending a bunch of supervillains out there to do the impossible in what is likely a suicide run. And it's literally the exact same thing in the movie. It's what the Suicide Squad is about. So, but that Bohemian Rhapsody trailer that they put out, that was awesome. That was an awesome trailer. That reminded me of Guardians of the Galaxy. I was like, that's the exact tone that they should be going for with this. That makes me so happy. But also, there was a report that I swear this is true, there was a report that apparently they have already, this movie should have been fully wrapped up. They should be in the editing process now. They went back and shot extra scenes because they wanted to add more humor to the movie. I was like, okay, you're learning your lesson. Although it makes me kind of nervous because I was like, I thought this movie was going to be humorous just from looking at yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so is it not? Did you have to add humor? And that trailer was misleading, so. 
I'm also kind of worried about the editing process, like if they're, uh, if like how well are they going to include the extra scenes. Oh, the editor from this film got fired. The <laughs> editor on this film was shit can. You know he was. There is no way that the person who edited this still has work. Uh, but yeah, I have way more faith uh, in, it's sad to say, but aside from Justice League, I have way more faith in all their other films because, yes, the people at the top, they clearly did not know what they were doing when they were giving all these people control or the directions that they wanted to take this universe. But after this massive blowback, they can't ignore this. Uh, so I think from now, they actually know they are actually going to go ahead with this. And a lot of people were saying, it's like, well, how do you know that they're going to learn their lesson? Uh, I was listening to a podcast recently, and one of the guests who was a filmmaker, he said, I actually know someone who works at Warner Brothers. He's not a high-level guy, he's just some guy who works there, but he said that at the screening that they had just for them, just for the producers of this film, they all silently got up and just walked out of there without saying a word when it was over. It was like, they know! They know what they made! And they saw the reaction that everyone had. They know what to do. I'm not gonna say they know what to do from now on, but they're not going to try and lean into what they were leaning into. Uh, they have learned, don't do that. Now the question is, how successfully can they do this? Uh, but yeah, I have way more faith in all the other films aside from Justice League, because that one's being made by the exact same people and they start filming in a week, so <laughs> it's too late for that one. Uh, I hate saying it, but it's too late for Justice League. All right, uh, next one comes from Omega Seven Man on Tumblr. I thought Wonder Woman was great in the movie, but she didn't have much to do. So do you think Wonder Woman should have had more to do in this movie? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm split on this one because it's like, yeah, I totally agree with you. What she was in was good, but I was discussing with another person in my story. I said, okay, well, are you just upset about this film because you felt it was a bad interpretation of these characters? Like, if you went into this and you had no knowledge of any of this stuff, and you just saw this happening, how would you feel about it? I went, I would have hated it even more because it, this film relies heavily on you just knowing these characters. And the example I brought up was, if you didn't know anything about these characters, why the hell did this mystery lady from the dinner party suddenly show up in Amazon gear and just start kicking ass with superpowers? And why did this mystery man show up in Batman's dream? Uh, that was a giant what the fuck was that? That was a giant what the fuck was that? But yeah, it's like, yeah, Wonder Woman was not really set up in here. Wonder Woman was only set up as, hey kids, it's Wonder Woman. It's like, mm -hmm. no, you need to give her more respect. I think, yeah, they really need to set her up more. Uh, my answer, so my answer to that was either just have her at the dinner parties and then at the end of the film that's when Batman like hacks into the device and he sends her the picture and she looks at it and then says who are you at the bottom it's like that would have been a great tease or you make this a full on flat out Trinity film in which each of these characters get equal treatment. Yeah. It's like I don't think they hit the right balance with her. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like either go less and have it be a full on tease have it be more and have it be a full-on Trinity film. The middle part, I agree with you. They did not land that. Um, speaking of Wonder Woman, this one was not submitted to me as part of the Q&A, but uh, I wanted to read this anyway. Like, this came to me a week ago, and I was like, I know I'm doing this Q&A video. I want to bring this up now. Uh, an anonymous also uh, submitted, probably a different anonymous, who knows, but they submitted, as much as I hate to say this, I think Galdo was, although people were telling me it's Gal Dot. Uh, I thought the T was song, but I guess it's not. Uh, as much as I hate to say this, I think Gal Dot was cast because Snyder has the hots for her. According to one interview she did, she uh, he approached her for the role, and she was like, I don't know. And then he was like, no, no, you'd be great. And she finally said K, and this feels like the Snow White movie with Christian Stewart. Oh God, poor Christian Stewart. Uh, the director kept gushing about her bland acting in interviews, and we find out later that they were making out on the side, so with a bunch of O's, uh, not holding my breath for Wendy's movie. Okay, I will totally agree with this story that, not that they're like, you know, hooking up or anything like that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I will agree that I think that Snyder just came up to her and said, you'd be great without even auditioning her. Yeah. Because A, who the hell thought Gal Gadot when they thought Wonder Woman? 
someone who had just been in a Fast and Furious film and now all of a sudden is like, no, you're going to be up here with all these other A-list actors playing the biggest female superhero of all time. It was totally weird to do that. Like, we can all admit that was weird casting. And also, yeah, I heard a story where Zack Snyder was talking about how he cast Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. He said he originally wanted him to be Jimmy Olsen there at the beginning of the film. By the way, for anybody who doesn't know, that reporter, the photographer who was with Lois Lane at the beginning, who got shot in the head, was Jimmy Olsen. They confirmed that. I'm not going to get into that now. But he said that he wanted him as Jimmy Olsen, and he said that would be a total misdirection. People would think, oh, he's going to be a big role, then he'd get shot in the head, and nobody would see it coming. And Jesse Eisenberg was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And, like, he argued with him on this, and he said, you know what, he was so good in those negotiations, he'd make a great Lex Luthor, and that's how he got the Lex Luthor role. Jesse Eisenberg did not say, no, 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 if I'm going to be in this, I'm going to be Lex Luthor. He was like, oh, man, did you see him argue there? He's totally Lex Luthor. I don't think they're hooking up. I don't think that at all. I do think that Zack Snyder cast people by, oh, yeah, I talked to this person at a dinner party once. Let's get him. <laughs> I was like, that's what I think this is. I think that he looked at her and went, she's got black hair, let's hire that lady. It's like, yeah, I can see that. Uh, but I will say this, I think she did she did way better than I thought she would. Mm -hmm. Like, again, I don't think they gave her nearly enough to really show off the range of that character. Uh, I don't think that, basically, it's exactly what I said in the last question. Yeah, like, the only thing that makes me nervous is, like, how well she's going to, like, actually act. Like... In the movie, all she did was beat the crap out of... That's the thing, nobody's really talking about the rest of her. Like, everybody talks about the action scene. Yeah, it's like, she was great fighting, but it's like... She can scream and jump really well. Yeah, but that doesn't mean she'll be able to, like, act out everything else. And that's what kind of makes me nervous about the Wonder Woman movie. I, I'm going to go in there and be like, alright, let's see what you got. Yeah, basically. But, I, but here's the thing, this is the argument I've been making, and people disagree with me on this all over, so... If you disagree, then great, but... People kept saying, oh, Jesse Eisenberg, he was just playing the Joker the whole time. I kind of think that before uh, before she actually suited up and became Wonder Woman, I think they were just having her play Catwoman the entire time. Like, look, think about this. Think about if you went into this film and you did not know that Gal Gadot was Wonder Woman and you didn't know that Wonder Woman was going to be in this film at all and you just saw Bruce Wayne going to dinner parties and there's some lady in an elegant dress and she steals something from Bruce Wayne and then they run into each other at a museum and she's examining these valuable artifacts and then they kind of flirt back and forth with each other you think that was Catwoman. Mm -hmm. You would 100% think that was Catwoman and yeah everybody's like oh they set up this great mystery behind her and she was so intriguing I was like um, yeah. she's intriguing like Catwoman. Um, <laughs> So not yeah. like Wonder Woman. Yeah, it's like, uh, I, I need to see more of her before. Yeah. I am totally down with her jumping around, screaming, and slashing stuff because she nailed that. Mm -hmm. But seeing her as Diana Prince, I still need to see a little bit more of this. Uh, and I am kind of nervous about the Wonder Woman film simply because we saw some test footage of it during this, like, uh, uh, what was it? Um, some special on TV. I don't remember what it was, but they showed some test footage of it. Everything is blue in that film. Like, yo, listen up, here's the story of an Amazon in a blue little world, and everything outside of that world was blue, and man's world was blue, and daba dee ba doo and it's like... Yeah, like, I don't know if you saw the test footage, but like, all of man's world is dark blue. I do not want to watch a film like that for that long, especially the Wonder Woman movie, which is supposed to be like bright and shine and she's this ambassador of hope and peace and love. And it's like, all right, whatever. Wait, unless like her, I don't know if it was like Man's World that was blue and like her role was supposed to be bright and colorful. That, I, that's the thing. I think that's what they're going for. And I'll be okay with that, except that we're going to spend the majority of the film in Man's World. And it's like, it's kind of like the problem man, with uh, Batman v Superman. It's like, you can't be that one shade for that long. <laughs> And, like, not have us get tired. Uh, so, okay. But, yeah, I'm nervous about it. But mm -hmm. I'm nervous about it, but I'm looking forward to it way more. Yes, me too. Than Justice League or anything else. Yeah. Like, this is being handled by different people. I think they did set up enough stuff with her to make me excited. And I, the stuff that I saw of Gal Gadot as actual Wonder Woman was actually good. So, I am excited for it. 
But I don't think that, it, going back to your question, I don't think they're hooking up. I just think that it's only like Zack Snyder's like, I know this person, let's give him a movie. Uh, okay. Like, hey, this guy delivered pizza, he was great, we should put him in a movie. <laughs> what if that was Jimmy Olsen? What if that was the guy that got Jimmy Olsen? <laughs> oh man, I'm finally gonna be in a big movie. <laughs> Motherfucking Snyder. All right, uh, we're switching over to Twitter now. This one comes from JRE Best. Uh, let's see. For the Q and A, how do you think they'll handle the new guys? I think they're trying to make them space horror type things. Uh, I halfway agree with you on this because Warner Brothers they came out and they went, oh, you guys, you you didn't get that excited for Batman vs Superman. Here's one of the deleted scenes that we cut out of it, and it was uh, Jesse Eisenberg going around the Kryptonian ship, and there's this big mechanical thing, like it looks like just a bunch of pin needles coming to life, which is what technology on Krypton looked like. It's like they established that in Man of Steel, so it's like, all right, whatever. But forms into this giant horned monster thing with long spindly arms, and it's holding mother boxes, and then it just vanishes away. And people are saying, people are coming up with a bunch of different theories on it, which, Here's the thing, Warner Brothers, people complain that your movie was too confusing and it didn't make sense. Don't try and get us hyped for it again by giving us a clip that again makes no sense and it's just confusing. Nobody knows what that meant, but a guy at my store who knows way more about classic DC than any of us, he says that he thinks that that is Darkseid's dad because he actually did kind of look like that with the horns and stuff and that that was probably like a visual recording of the history of Apocalypse. So it's like, okay, that is the best explanation I heard for that, but that monster did look like some space horror stuff. Uh, so I do think they're going with that with the apocalypse half of the new gods. I would not be shocked if it was some weird space horror stuff. Uh, by the way, the other theory about that video clip is that there were some guys running around with guns inside the Kryptonian ship, and they aimed the little target red dots at Lex Luthor, and they form into the Brainiac symbol on his forehead. So, some people are saying that that was actually Brainiac? That was the big mechanical monster thing? I don't know. But uh, if that is Darkseid's dad, and that's the history of Apocalypse, and yeah, I think they'll probably go with some space horror stuff. Uh, as for the new gods themselves, the ones on New Genesis, which is the bright and shiny counterpart to Apocalypse, I don't think we're going to hear about that at all. I don't think that they're even going to mention that. I think they're going to go, you know, Apocalypse, that's pretty cool, fire pits and all that. New Genesis, the peaceful place. Nobody wants to hear about that, man. Yeah, peace is boring. We need war and violence. Yeah. <laughs> either that, either that, or this is the other theory I came up with, is that the new gods of New Genesis, the bright peaceful ones, are actually going to be the gods of Earth that Wonder Woman worships, and that's how they're going to tie this all in. I don't know how I feel about that, because it could be cool, could be dumb, uh, but that's my theory on what they're going to do with that. Uh, let's see, um, Danny, uh, at the Magical Lady, I think that's what that is, my vision is terrible, I apologize. But yeah, Danny, he constantly, uh, contacts me on Twitter, he's a very cool guy. Uh, is that a girl? I don't know, actually, because it is the Magical Lady, my bad. And it's, and it's Danny with an I at the end, not a Y. You're right, my bad, very cool lady. Okay, very cool person who is allowed to be whoever they want to be. <laughs> uh, alright. Uh, my question, when did Lex Luthor start studying people with powers? I have no idea. That was no, that's another plot hole in the movie. I'm going to guess when Superman crash landed 18 months ago and destroyed all Metropolis. <laughs> if I had to guess, that's when they when <laughs> started. But yeah, uh, no clue on that one. Uh, let's see. Steven, at Karate, my vision is awful, at Karate Kid 192000, uh, at Professor Thorgy, what did you think of Ezra Miller's flash cameo slash dream sequence? Was iffy on him, uh, I... Was iffy on how I felt about him being flash, but now I'm excited. I'm kind of the same way. Uh, like, that dream sequence is dumb. It is. Like, they didn't handle that well at all. Like, he just pops up, says, like, three lines, and then disappears, and it was a dream sequence. It's, it's weird. It didn't make any sense. But, I will say, his delivery of those lines was good, and he had, like, it's hard to judge how he's going to portray the character just from that. It is. But, he looked pretty good in the suit, <laughs> and the way he delivered those lines were good, and he did have that look on his face that made me think, yeah, Barry. Barry just, you know, he had that wide-eyed Barry look on him. Because <laughs> Barry is kind of wide-eyed, uh, optimistic, and hopeful, and even in this dark, 
desperate, horrifying, like, future that he was traveling back from, he still had the white eyes, which I was like, yeah, okay. Uh, so yeah, I, I did go from, uh, I don't know, to, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I think he could actually be pretty good. Hey everybody, it's me, Aaron, that guy from that thing you were just watching. You remember, it was like five seconds ago. But anyway, this was our very first ever q and A. I I thank everybody for submitting questions, and I was not planning on answering every single one of your questions because I knew that it would make this video way too long. But then as I started answering questions, I started having a lot of fun with it, and I decided, you know what, screw it, I'm going to answer every single question. But it did end up making a really long video, and realizing that nobody wants to watch me answer questions for an entire hour and a half, I decided to divide it up into three different parts. And no, this is not some scam on my part to say, hey, if you like part one, hit subscribe to make sure that you see part two and three. Although I would appreciate it if you hit subscribe. Thank you very much. No, part two and three are up right now. All three episodes went live at the exact same moment. You can see part two up there in the top left corner, and you can see part three up there in the right corner. Also, if you missed my review of Batman vs Superman and you want to know why I'm so angry about it in the first place, then you can see the review in the bottom left corner and you can see the spoiler talk that we did in the bottom right corner. Thank you everybody for watching and I hope you enjoyed part 2 and 3 as much as you enjoyed part 1. Unless you didn't enjoy part 1, then I hope you like it even more.